Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printer here. In today's video, I'll be building a blog. So I'm going to take this template that I found online, and here is the live version of this blog, and I'm going to convert it to Flask so I can actually add blog posts, and then they will appear in this style that I have for this template. So that's what this entire video is going to be about from start to finish. I'm gonna approach this video like I would a normal project. So instead of having everything pre-planned like I do for most of my videos, I'm going to maybe have to look up some things along the way because I can't remember everything about every single thing that I write code for. So before I get started writing the code, there are three things that you can get out of the links in the description below. The first will be the code for this video. So after you're done watching the video, you can get the code for this video. There will be a link in the description below. Also, you can get the Flask cheat sheet. Uh, this cheat sheet has a few things that are very common in Flask. So if you're somewhat new to Flask or maybe you just want to see what I think is common, you can download the Flask cheat sheet. So that's going to be in the description below as well. And then also I have my website where I have full courses on Flask. And in these courses, I have demo applications like I do, like I'm going to build in this video. So if you're interested in learning how to build more apps instead of just one-off videos like I usually do, check out my courses on prettyprinted.com. All right, so to get started, I have this blog. Let me close that out. So here we have all the files that come along with the blog. And then on the left-hand side, I have the beginning of my project directory. Since this blog is pretty simple, I'll just keep it to one file. But first, I need to convert these HTML files to be templates in Jinja. So what I'll do to start is I will create a templates directory. So templates. And then what I'll do is I will add the relevant files. So contact, about, and then what I'll do is I'll just add the license here. And then from here, I'll figure out what CSS files are needed. So let me get started with my app. First thing I need to do is install Flask. So pip install Flask. This is a new virtual environment. And up here, I'll do the typical imports. So app is name. And then I'll put the uh, if name equals main part at the bottom down here. So app run debug true. Okay, so now that I have that, what I want to do is I want to render the templates for those four files. So I need to import render template. And then I'll have four routes. So the first route will be an index. Render template. And I believe the file name is index.html. Yes. And then I'll do the same thing for the other three. So there's about. And this one's going to be static, so I won't have to really modify this one. There will be post. And it's post.html, I believe. Let me just verify that. Yes, and then contact. So those are the ones I'll start off with. I'll need more, especially to handle submitting blog posts. But when I get to that, you'll see what I do. So contact. Render template contact.html. And of course, since this is a view, all of them need return statements before them. So let me just add the return statements here. And now what I'll do is I'll start up the app so I can figure out which CSS files I need. So first, let me change directory to my project directory. And then I'll start out the blog. Invalid syntax. Okay, so I'll start it up. And if I go to the index, I get this. So I have the HTML, but I don't have the style. So what I'll do is I'll 
open up all the HTML files and I'll start with the index and I'll take a look at what style sheet I need. So first I need bootstrap. So I will create a static directory in my project directory. And I will add the CSS. So it's in vendor bootstrap CSS bootstrap min. So let's see if I can find that. So vendor bootstrap CSS and then bootstrap dot min. So I'll just take that and I'll copy it over. So bootstrap min. And then what I'll do is I'll change this to use the static directory. So URL for static. And then the file name will be bootstrap.min.css. Because that is what I just put into the static directory. So now let me take a look at the app to make sure it actually loads. So you can see it immediately changed. So it's picking up some of it. Now I can move on to the next thing. Uh, font, uh, font awesome is the next thing I want to add in there. So I'll find that. Font awesome, CSS, and then this is the minified version. So I'll just take that one and copy it over. So font awesome. And I'll do the same thing. So URL for static. And then file name is going to be fontawesome.min.css. All right, so I can skip over this because this is an external link. Same with this one. And then finally, I have this clean blog min.css. So let me find that one. And I'll simply add that to my project. And I'll do the same thing. So it's going to be URL4 static. And then the file name is going to be that clean blog. And let me just cut and paste here. So cut, paste. And that should be it. So let's see if this changes again. All right, so now I have more of the look. It's not completely done, but it's almost there. So now I'm going to look for any JavaScript in here that I need to modify. So it should be at the bottom. Uh, so jQuery, Popper, and Bootstrap, along with clean blog, min, CSS. So all these are going to be very similar to what I did for the CSS. So I'll just add them all at once. So JS clean blog. And then I'll also go to the vendor and jQuery is one, the minified version of jQuery. Popper is another, and there's a bootstrap one. So simply bootstrap.min and CSS. All right, there we go. So now what I want to do is add the URL for all of these. And I'll just copy one from up here because it's going to be very similar. So I'll just take this, copy it. And I'll put it here for each one at the beginning. And then I'll modify the actual file name. So for that one, I can put the JS there and I'm not copying the paths, just the files, so I can get rid of the path. And then popper. And jQuery. Okay, so now let me refresh and make sure everything looks okay. And it does. So finally, what I want to do is I want to find the images. So I'll search for IMG tags. And what I'll do is I'll replace these with URL4. So in this case, 
I'm looking for an image and it is home background. So I'll put that there. And then once again, URL for static file name is going to be home background dot JPEG. And make, let me make sure that I'm using the correct brackets. So I have double brackets there. Let's see if that works. It doesn't. So just something here is messed up. So let me copy the URL for it and I'll undo everything and simply replace it. Okay, so single quotes here and then double quotes for the HTML. So what I'll do is I'll set a variable. Actually, no, I don't want a variable. I will just put it here. I'll put double quotes here. And let's see if that works. It doesn't. So just the quotes here. So I have to find out how to escape quotes in Jinja. So this is the first thing I need to look up because I don't usually do this. So let's see. I'll go to Stack Overflow and I'll look for an answer. And actually single quotes should work pretty well because what happens in the URL for it gets rendered first. So let's see, you just have to make sure that it doesn't close it out improperly. There we go. So let's take a look now. There we go. So I have the background for the blog there. I'm missing something here. Maybe it's the fonts. So let's take a look. Yes, it's font awesome. So maybe that's not loading correctly. So I will refresh and take a look and see if there are any 404 errors. So yeah, I have 404s for the font awesome Git requests. So let's take a look and see what's going wrong there. I don't see anything wrong so far. Is it loading the original font awesome? Yes, it is. And it's loading these, but font awesome dot web fronts. Okay, so let's see if I'm just missing those files from the static directory. So I'll go back to vendor, font awesome, and then fonts. And I'll simply copy this over and let's see if it can pick it up. And I'll know if it picked it up because the fonts at the bottom will start working. So still nothing. So let me find the reference to the fonts. So here we go, here's the problem. It is up two directories. So if I just remove those extra dots. And by removing these, it should be able to pick them up. And let me make sure there are no more. They should be at the beginning. So I'll try that and let's see if it changes. Still nothing. So 
Let me look for URLs. How about a hard refresh so the CSS loads again? It's still not there. So what I'll do is I'll ignore this for now so I don't spend too much time on that, and I'll come back to it later. So now that I have this set up, I want to move on to the next pages. So I'll close this out, and the links should be the same for the other files as well. So we see Bootstrap, Font Awesome, and then Clean Blog. So I'll just copy and paste that over. So from there to there. And I'll do the same thing for Contact and Post. All right, and then what I want to do at the bottom is change the JavaScript. So I'll go to the bottom of this file and copy it over. Now I could have these in a separate file then include them, but since I only have four files, I don't think it's such a big deal. And this one has some extra. So what I'll do is I'll ignore that one for now. Well, I'll put it below. And then bootstrap validation and contact me.js. So actually, I don't want to use those for this app, so I'll get rid of those because it calls a PHP script, one that I won't be using. So now let me check the other pages to make sure they look okay. So about, post, and contact. So about, it looks fine except for the fonts there and the background image. So let me fix the background image for about. I'll search for an image tag, IMG. And then what I'll do is I'll put a URL for it in there. So I'll just copy the one I have here so I don't mess up the quotes again. And URL is going to be this. And it's going to be about BG instead of home BG. So I can remove that, save it, refresh. Still doesn't work because I did not copy over the image. So about, then refresh. Okay, so that's there. And this page is going to be left alone because it's just a static page. So now post, and I'll get the background for this one. So post. And where's the background? Here we go. So I'll just put that there. I'll copy URL four again, go to posts, paste it in there, change this to post background, and then delete the old link. And then I'll copy it over. So post background, and then I'll refresh. Okay, so this page works, and the fonts are messed up, and the fonts are just social links, thinking about it, so I can remove those. So the contact me page is the last one. So for the image, I will copy and paste this. And then change this to contact background.jpg. And then copy over the image. And refresh. Okay, so now let me remove the social links because I don't need them and they're messing up. So the social links start in the footer. Let's see. Need to find where they end. Looks like this unordered list. So I'll simply remove this one. And let's take a look at the contact page now. So I want these to disappear. All right, those are gone. 
and then I'll do the same thing for the other three pages. And then once I'm done with that, I'll pretty much be done with modifying the templates to be supported in Flask. So post about, I'll remove the social links. And then the index. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll go back to the index. And I see I have everything looking good. The social links are gone. I need to modify these links to point to the correct page. So I'll do that now. So now what I'm looking for is any HTML reference because that's pointing to an actual template instead of the page. So what I'll do is I'll add URL for here. So the main content, that's a little different. That's going to be dynamic. So I can skip over that. But once I get to the links in the navigation, so like this one, this should be URL for index. And then likewise for this one down here. And then I'll add about post and contact. So these just match the routes that I've created already. So now let me make sure that these work. So just looking at the address that shows up on my browser, those all look okay. And the navigation is the same on each one. So what I'll do is I'll just copy and paste. Like I said, if you had more templates, then you probably want to create a separate file to include them. But since this app is going to be pretty small, I just want to keep it as simple as possible. So once I do this, I can get into the actual good stuff. So as you can see, it doesn't take much to convert a template, but if you are starting with a template, which could be normal if you depend on a designer to design how your app will look, then yeah, you have to convert the template to be used in Jinja and Flask. So now that that's done, like if I go to sample posts and then about, all right, so all these links are working correctly. So now the first thing that I want to do is I want to set up a database. So what I'll do is I'll use Flask SQL Alchemy, Flask underscore SQL Alchemy, and I need to install that using pip. So it's being installed. So from Flask SQL Alchemy, import SQL Alchemy. And my app configuration needs a database location. So database URI and then SQL Alchemy goes in front of it. So SQL Alchemy, database URI, SQLite, and then I'll specify the location. And I'll call the database blog.db. All right, so once SQL Alchemy is done installing, I'll create the database. So blog.db, call tables, so it saves the database. And now I should have a database there. So I see the blog.db there. So now what I want to do is I want to create a table that will hold the blog post information. So class, I'll call this post say blog post. Inherits DB model. First one is going to be an ID. So ID is going to be an integer. And this should be db.column first. So db column. And then an integer. And it will be the primary key. Second one is going to be a title. 
So let's just have that be a string of 50 characters. Next will be a subtitle because looking at the blog that I have, let me go back, it has a main title and then a subtitle down there. So subtitle will be same, it can be 50 characters as well. And then I have posted by, so author, and I won't create a system of authors, I'll just keep this simple and have it to where you can input an author. So author, it's going to be a column and it's also going to be a string. And let's say 20 characters for the author. Next, the date posted. So date posted. It's going to be a column. And then let me look up Flash SQL Alchemy docs because I want to know exactly which columns I can use. So if I can spell SQL Alchemy, I'll look it up in the documentation. I just want to make sure I get the column right because there are different types of columns that I can use. So declaring models, and then there should be a section here. Yeah, so date time. So db.datetime, and then I convert, can convert the date that gets stored there into a regular date. So I'll handle that later. So db.datetime. And then the last thing, of course, will be the actual content of the blog post. So I don't want a string, I want something bigger. So some longer Unicode text will be db.txt. So I'll call this content is db column and then db dot text. And let me start up my app again just so I can see the contact page, make sure I'm not missing anything. So I have the title, a subtitle, an author, a date, and the content in the article. So that's exactly what I want. So now that I have all those things, what I want to do is I want to actually create them in the database. So I'll start up Python, and then from app import db, db create all. And there we go. So the database should have that table now, and it's going to be the one table for my app because it's simply a blog. If you were to have authors, then you'd have like an author table and any other extra functionality that you wanna have, you might have to have a corresponding table. But for this example, I'll keep it pretty simple because I'm already 30 minutes in and I'm only getting to the database. So I don't wanna do too much. But I have the one table that I need and if I need to do something else, then I'll, I can come back to it later. So now what I want to do is I want to enable the user to add blog posts to the database. So first I'll add posts to the database and then I'll actually display them. So what I'll do is I will create a new route and I'll call this add. So add will be a new template, add.html. But since contact already has somewhat of a form, so I'll start up the app again. What I'll do is I'll use this form to submit the blog post. And I'll change this up a little bit, but it's going to be in a similar style. So contact is going to be used as add. Add.html. And then what I want to do is I want to remove the contact me and I'll replace it with add post. So let's see if I can find it. Contact me. Add post. You can create a blog post here. So I'll refresh this and it's my app running. Looks like it is, so I'll refresh. And I'm looking at the wrong page, so I need to go to add. And I see add posts. 
And then I'll modify this form to accept the necessary things that get stored in the database. So like the title, the subtitle, and so on. So what I'll do in add here is I'll remove some of the things like the want to get in touch with me part. I can simply remove that. So I'll remove all this. And then I'll have a title. And I'll change the name to be title. Please enter a title. And then I'll have a subtitle. And this will be type text. Placeholder will be subtitle. ID will be subtitle. And the name should be subtitle. So I'll add name here because when you submit a form, it uses the name instead of the ID. So subtitle. And then for my title up here, I need a name as well, title. So let's see if that looks okay so far. All right, so title and subtitle are there. So now the next thing I want to add um, is an author. So the third one, so instead of a phone number, I'll change that to be author. So add, and then let's see, where is it? Author is here. Type is going to be text again. Placeholder will be author. Name will be author. And ID will be author. Then finally, I'll change this to blog contents. Placeholder will be blog content. And message will be or the ID will be content and the name will be content. So let's see. All right, so everything looks good so far. And then I have the send button. It's the send button that doesn't do anything yet. So now what I want to do is I want to add a route to handle the submission of that form. So what I'll do is I'll have it submit to a route called add posts. Add posts, and I need to import the requests from Flask so I can actually get the request data. And now what I want to do here just to verify that it works is I want to show all the information that's being passed in. So title is going to be blank, and I'll fill this in in a moment. Title, subtitle. Title, subtitle, author, and content. And then I'll close out the H1, and then I'll format this with, so I'll create variables here. So title is going to be requests dot form title. Subtitle is going to be pretty much the same subtitle and then I'll use author so author will be request a uh, form author and finally content will be requests dot form content all right so I'll pass all these in so title subtitle author and content and then I need to modify the form just a little more so where is it? The, the form here, I need to call this add form, add form. And then the method will be post and the action will be URL for, so URL for add post. So now let's see if all this works correctly. If it does, then I'll be able to see what I pass in. If it doesn't, then I'll probably get an error. So let me refresh this, remove the query variables. I got an error because I saved too early. So I just restarted the app. I'll go back to add. So the title will be the title. The subtitle will be the subtitle. 
the author will be the author and here is the blog content. So if I send this, I'm hoping to see it. And it tells me method not allowed. So that's a pretty easy error to fix. I forgot to put methods to be post because by default it's git. So I'll go back and I'll try this again. And now I see all the data that I want. So I see the title, I see the subtitle, I see the author, and I see the content. So that's exactly what I want. So now that I can do that, I want to add all this to the database. So I have this blog post. So I'll create a variable called posts and I'll instantiate blog posts. So the title will be the title, the subtitle will be the subtitle, the author will be the author, and the content will be content. So I can remove this down here. And I'll return uh, redirecting the user to the index. So return URL for, or is it just redirect? No, it's redirect first and then URL for, and then the index. So I need to include redirect and URL for. Okay, so in addition to the title, subtitle, author, and content, I also want to have the date posted. So I'm going to need to import the Python datetime object. So from datetime, import datetime. I believe that's it. So to test this out, what I'll do is I'll use my console or the REPL. So from datetime, import datetime, and then datetime.now. And that's exactly what I want. So it shows me the time that it is right now. And I'll just pass that into the database. So I'll exit and I'll start up the app again. So date posted will be date time dot now. Okay, so if all this works correctly, then I'll be able to look in my database and see that I've posted a blog post. So before I do that, let me take a look at the format of the post here so I can kind of write it in a similar way. So it's going to go in between this div. So it's just paragraphs, block quotes, and headers. So this won't be a fancy blog with like a rich text editor. It's going to be pretty simple. So I'll have to add the HTML myself. So now let's take a look. So the title will be first blog post. Subtitle will be, I hope this works. Author will be Anthony, and the blog content will be, this is the first blog post on the site. I'll end that there, and then I'll add another paragraph. I hope all this works well. All right, so there's the information I want. So when I hit send, it should save it to the database. But one last thing I forgot to do is I actually have to add it to the database. So I'm creating the post, but I'm not actually adding it to the database. So to do that with SQL Alchemy, it's pretty simple. DB session add post, and then DB session commit, and then the post should be added, and then it will redirect me to the index. So let's see if that works. Send, then I get redirected to the index. So now to figure out if it works properly, what I want to do is I want to open up SQLite, so blog.db, and I'll select star from, well, what's the name of the table that I have? Blog post, so select star from blog post. And you can see it has an ID of one. Then I have the title that I added. I have the subtitle, the author, me, the date time, and then I have the content. So you see there's two paragraphs there and that's it. So I know that adding a post works. So now that I can add a post, what I want to do is I want to actually show all the posts that I have. Well, actually, no, I want to show the actual post here. So I'll replace this with the title, this with the subtitle, and so on, and then the content here. So I'll go to my post template, and I'll modify it a little bit. So I'll change everything inside of the div that I just mentioned. So from here, and let me just follow it down because this is well spaced. 
So I can simply get rid of all this here because this is the content. All right, and then I'll replace that. So in the posts, what I'll do is I'll allow for a post ID. So it's going to be an integer and I'll call the variable post ID. And to use that, I need to include it here, post ID. And then what I'll do with that post ID is I'll query the database for it and get the actual post content for whatever post ID I pass in. So for the first post, I have one, but for other posts, it can be something else. So this will be a query. So it's going to be blog post dot query dot filter by and then ID equals post ID. And this can be a git, but I'm so used to filter by that it really doesn't matter. And there's going to be one result because the post ID is unique. So with that, I can pass the post to the template. And then I can modify the post here. So the title will be post.title. And let me try that out. So I have posts here. I need to specify the URL now. So post slash one. And it says it could not build URL for endpoint posts. So it's telling me that I forgot something. So let's see. Posts. There's a post ID here. And it's just asking me if I forgot the post. And the reason why is because I no longer have that link to the post. So what I'll do is I'll remove the sample post link because it doesn't make sense anymore. So I'll go to posts and I'll do that on the other ones as well when I get around to it. So remove post and then refresh. Okay. So now I see the first blog post and then the content is gone because I removed it. So let me replace the subtitle and the author. So where it is, okay, so this is the subtitle. So post.subtitle will give me the subtitle information. And then posted by, I don't need a link, so I'll simply remove that. And I'll put post.author. So let's see if that works. Okay, so first blog post, I hope this works. Posted by Anthony on August 24th, 2017. That's not dynamic yet, so I'll have to change that. But let me add the content here. So if I simply do post.content, that should give me the text. And Jinja is showing these because it's escaping. So to not have that happen, I just pipe safe after the content. And then you can see it formats correctly. So this is just to protect you from people typing in HTML and then you loading it into a template directly. If you know that there's going to be HTML in something that you're loading, then you just pass it through safe and then you can see it that way. So now what I want to do is I want to actually show the date. So I'm recording this on September 3rd. So instead of August 24th, it should be September 3rd. So what I'll do is I'll look up how to display the date time. So Python convert date time to string because this is something that I don't do normally. So it's formatting the time. So I have the date time. And what I'll do is instead of doing it in the template, I'll have to modify it in Python. So date posted will be a variable that I'm going to pass to the template. So date posted equals date posted. And just as a test, let's say January 28th, 1950. And if I go to post here and change the date to date posted, I should see that January 28th. Okay, so that part works. So now I want to use the actual date, not just a hard coded date. So I need to convert this using what I see here on Stack Overflow. So there's this 
string format time. So stir f time, S T R F time. So I have my posts dot date posted. Then I'll call stir f time on it and I'll give it a format. So the format will be, let's start with simply the month. So it should be a number month if this works. If it doesn't, I may have to modify something. Okay, so 09. So that is definitely the month, September. So let's see if capital M gives me the month name. It doesn't, that's the date. So let me look at this formatting link. And what I'm looking for is the month spelled out. So it's percent B, which is not intuitive at all. So percent B gives me the month. All right. And then I want the day. So I think it's percent D. Yes. And then a comma and then the year. So percent. And then let me look up what the year would be. So... Let's see, where is the year? Percent capital Y. Okay, so now I see everything that I want to see. I see the title, the subtitle, who posted it, when it was posted, and the actual content of the post. So just thinking about it now, I'm not going to do anything with the contact form, so I'll remove all that from my project. So templates, I'll remove contact here, and then I'll remove the static content background, or contact background. And I can close this out because I have all the things that I need. So on posts, I'll remove that contact link. That can be a video for another day. And then on add, same thing. I want to remove the sample post and the contact contact is gone about remove the sample post and the contact and on index I remove the sample posts and the contact all right so refreshing so I only have two links now which is what I want so if I go back home now what I want to do is I want to get a list of all these and I won't use older posts because I won't have any posts in the database, so I'll leave that button there, but it won't do anything. Instead, what I'll do is I'll simply loop through the posts in the database, and I will display them here. So before I do that, let me add a second one so it's easy to see. Second post. Here is the second post. Author is Anthony again, and then the blog content will be... Let's do a header. Here is the second post. This should work because I already tested it with the first post. All right, so I'll add this and it returns me here. So I know that post was just committed to the database because I tried it with the first one. So if I go back to posts and go to number two, because it should be two, it's sequential, then I see my second post. And if I go one, then I'll see the first post. So now what I want to do is I want to loop over the results and display them on the index. So I'll remove contact here because I'm not using it anymore. And then I'll go to index and what I'll do is I'll create a variable called posts which will represent all the posts in the database. And then I'll use blog posts dot query. And I won't filter by anything because I want all of them. And I'll pass these to the database or pass them to the template. So now what I want to do is I want to go to the index here and find where it loops. So you can see that this HTML is repeated over and over again. So I just need to remove all but one. So I'll remove this one and there's a horizontal row in between. So there should be three more to remove. And I just need to make sure I don't remove the last one. All right, there we go. So in here, what I'll do is I'll create a loop. So for 
post and posts because it's passed to the template. In for. Now what I want to do is I want to replace everything. So man must explore, that's the title. So this will be posts.title. So let me just verify that part works. All right, so I see first post and second post. And then there's a link. So I want that link to point to the ID. So this link will be URL for posts, and then I need to pass in an ID. So the ID will be posts.id. So if I refresh this, and then it's telling me there's an error, that's because it should be post ID, not simply ID. So post underscore ID. All right, so I can see them in the browser. So if I click here, I get to the second post. And if I click the first blog post, then I see that again. All right, so now let me add the subtitle. Subtitle, posted by, so once again, I don't need the link, post.author. And I won't be able to get away with doing that same trick where I format the date on the Python side. So first, let me make sure everything looks good. All right, so I hope this works, and here's the second post. All right, so I have everything except the actual date. And you saw before I used a trick where I did it in Python because stir f time is something that you can only call in Python. But just to be sure, let me try this. So I'll copy that, and inside of the template, I'll do this. And let's see how much it complains. And it doesn't actually, so that works. So what I'll do is I'll do the same thing on the posts. And now I'll remove the date posted here. So I didn't need that. I can do the string format time, and it's probably because it's an it's a method of the date posted date time object. So yeah, that's why it works. So now everything looks good. I can click here. Date post is not defined because I just messed that up. So if I remove date posted here, I should be able to see there's the second post. So everything looks good. Like I said, this older post button won't do anything. Let me just remove that because I don't use it for anything. So move that. And yeah, so everything looks good. Like I said, I have the index, which I was just looking at. The about page was just a static page. I have the add page, and then I have a post page. So really the last thing I want to do is I want to add that link to the add page on the home page. So I'll add a link there and I'll call this add add and I'll copy this for the other templates add here and up here and then refresh. Okay, so I see add, and I'll add one more post. Third post, this is the third post. Author, I'll change this to be David, blog content. Here is the third post. It looks like everything works well with this blog. So I'll send that, and then you can see the third post there. So everything works well, and maybe one last thing I'll do is I'll order this. So instead of being ordered by the oldest post to the newest, it will be newest to oldest, like a typical blog. 
So I will go down to the query for the posts here and I just need to order by date post it. So blog posts dot date underscore post it. Blog posts dot date post it dot all. So let me make sure that works. And I think I saved too early. Yeah. So Python app. All right. So yeah, it still works. So it should be DB dot descending. So I can't remember exactly how to do that in Flash SQL Alchemy. So I'll look that up and it should be pretty simple. Yes. It is. So just simply dot DSC. And now if I refresh, it orders by the newest to the oldest. So that's just about an hour to build this very simple blog. But I hope that by watching this, you can kind of understand the process that you will go through through to build a typical app. I mean, in a real app, there would be a lot of other things that you have to include. I skipped a bunch of things in the interest of time, but this is basically the process that I go through. As the file grows larger, I like to organize it better, but I knew this would be a pretty small app, and this is what, only 54 lines of code to create this blog. So you can see that it really doesn't take that much to do it. So that's it for this video. Like I said, if you want the cheat sheet, this here, just click the link in the description below. It's flask or prettyprinted.com slash flask cheat sheet. Then you can go to my website where you can take other courses on flask. And finally, in the description below, I'll have all this code for you to take a look at just in case you want to modify it or start here and see what you can do to it. So if you have any questions, you can leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.